In this video, you'll learn how to use a function equation to determine values of its inverse function and how to identify and justify which function is the inverse of a given function. An inverse function can be seen as a function that undoes the original function. The original function uses an x input to determine a y value. The inverse uses those y values as inputs and outputs the x value. So the inverse exchanges the x and y values. The domain and range of a function are reversed in its inverse. For example, if the point 2, 4 is on a function, then the point 4, 2 will be on the inverse of the function. The inverse function is usually notated by using exponent of negative 1. So, f to the negative 1 of x means the inverse function of f of x, or simply f inverse. Not all inverses are functions. Quadratic and absolute value functions have pairs of x values that map to the same y value. This means that, in the inverse, one x value maps to two different y values, which violates the definition of a function. In order for the inverse of a quadratic or absolute value function to be a function, the domain of the function must be restricted. To find an inverse function using the function equation, let y equal f of x and switch the independent and dependent variables x and y. Then use inverse operations to isolate y. Let's look at an example of using inverses. Given the function f of x equals 3x squared minus 5 for x equal to or greater than 0, what is f inverse 7? Remember, the method for finding the f inverse of x is to exchange the x and y and then solve the resulting equation for y. Replace f of x with y. y equals 3x squared minus 5. Now exchange the x and y. x equals 3y squared minus 5. Add 5 to each side. x plus 5 equals 3y squared. Divide both sides by 3. x plus 5 divided by 3 equals y squared. Take the square root of each side. Plus or minus the square root of x plus 5 over 3 equals y. Now, let's think through how to choose the positive or negative square root. The domain of the original function is given as x is greater than or equal to 0. f of x is a parabola opening upward and with a vertex of 0, negative 5. So, the range of f of x is y is greater than or equal to negative 5. The domain and range are switched in the inverse. So, the domain of f inverse is x is greater than or equal to negative 5, and y is greater than or equal to 0. For y to be greater than or equal to 0 in the inverse, the radical expression must be non-negative. Therefore, we are only looking at the positive root. f inverse equals the square root of x plus 5 over 3. Here is the f inverse. Now, use the inverse function to answer the question. Substitute 7 into the inverse to determine f inverse of 7. 7 plus 5 over 3 is 4, and the principal square root of 4 is 2. So, the answer is 2. Let's look at another example. Consider the function f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 3 for x less than or equal to negative 5. Find the equation for f inverse x and explain the effect of the restricted domain of f of x on f inverse x. To find the inverse, switch the independent and dependent variables and solve for y. First, 
replace f of x with y. Then switch the independent and dependent variables. Solve for y by completing the square. Since y plus 5 squared is y squared plus 10y plus 25, add 22 to each side to form a perfect squared trinomial. Factor the trinomial and take the square root of each side. For now, keep the square root as both positive and negative roots. Subtract 5 from each side. You almost have the inverse function. You just need to figure out whether the principal square root or negative square root is needed. The domain is restricted to x values less than or equal to negative 5. This means the range of the inverse function will be only y values less than or equal to negative 5. If the positive square root of, is used, it will result in y values greater than negative 5. So, only the negative square root can be used. So, f inverse is 5 less than the negative square root of the quantity x plus 22. Why is it important that a domain is restricted? Quadratic functions are parabolas and absolute value functions are v-shaped. In these function types, there are pairs of x values that map to the same y value. This means if the domain is not restricted in the inverse, one x value would map to two y values. This would violate the definition of a function. In order for the inverse of the quadratic or absolute value function to be a function, the domain of the original function must be restricted. Let's look at the answer choices. Only the first and third choices have the correct equation for the inverse. The first choice says an unrestricted domain of f of x would make the inverse undefined. Choice 3 says an unrestricted domain of f of x would make the inverse not a function. The correct answer is choice 3. If the domain were not restricted, the inverse would include both the positive and negative square roots, which would make the inverse not a function. Let's look at a picture to help understand why domains must be restricted. The first graph shows f of x equals x squared in red and its inverse, which is the positive and negative square root of x in blue. You can see the inverse is not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. However, if the domain of f of x is restricted to include only one half of the graph, such as the graph where only x is greater than or equal to zero, as in the second graph, then the inverse will be a function. In this case, it will be the principal square root of x. This same reasoning applies to absolute value functions as well. The domain of quadratic and absolute value functions must be restricted for their inverses to be functions. Let's look at one more example. Given the function f of x equals the absolute value of 5x minus 2 for x greater than or equal to 0, what is f inverse of 10? To find f inverse of x, exchange the x and y, and then solve the resulting equation for y. Replace f of x with y. y equals the absolute value of 5x minus 2. Now, exchange the x and y. x equals the absolute value of 5y minus 2. Add 2 to each side. x plus 2 equals the absolute value of 5y. To solve an absolute value equation, rewrite the equation in two parts. One part shows the case in which the value inside the absolute value bars is positive, and the other part shows the case in which the value inside the absolute value bars is negative. In this case, the two equations are x plus 2 equals 5y and x plus 2 equals negative 5y. The domain of f of x is restricted to x greater than or equal to 0, and since in the inverse 
the domain and range are switched, the range of the inverse will be y greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, only the case x plus two equals five y is valid. Divide both sides of this equation by five. x plus two divided by five equals y. So, the inverse is f inverse of x equals x plus two divided by five. Now, use the inverse function to answer the question. Substitute 10 into the inverse to determine f inverse of 10. 10 plus 2 over 5 is 12 over 5, which is 2.4. So the answer is 2.4. Now you know more about how to use a function equation to determine values of its inverse function and how to identify and justify which function is the inverse of a given function. Thanks for watching.